connotation to it. Yeah. That's why we've got others who have got that same title. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. That's the, that's the exact terminology in using the Bible yeah. because if you're then to be consistent, then you're going to have to say other people are referred to who are referred to as sons of God, but you don't take it in a literal sense as what you would understand of Jesus. That's what you call somewhat inconsistent. So for example, in, X, in, in Luke chapter 3 verse 38, Adam is referred to as the son of God. Yeah, well, he's, uh, he, he, says, he also says that um, nobody comes through me except for, for him, yeah, through so Jesus, which was the son of God. So you can't reach the heaven by works, only by grace of God, which, is, which he died for, which he died on the cross for. So what we say to that point, what you've referenced, my friend, is in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except through me. Now, what I want you to apply is the context of the verse. So we've got to start at the beginning of chapter 14. So it's actually referring to Philip and Thomas. You know the doubtful, doubting Thomas? Yeah. So basically, because he was sent to these individuals who were essentially Jews, and the Jews, as you are well aware, they, they had transgressed from worshipping God correctly. So therefore, Christ was sent to bring them back to worshipping God. And hence, when he speaks to these individuals, he says, follow my way. Because the way that, that you are leading your life is a void of God. Follow my, for I speak the truth, follow the message of what I'm telling you, and I am the life. Meaning, follow my life example. So there's nothing within that statement which then somehow exemplifies him to being God. He's just simply telling the guys, look, I've been sent by God, I'm his representative. You've got to follow me. So my way. Do you know why he died for So what we understand is that Jesus came to the earth to spread the message of worshipping God alone. He didn't come for the purpose of dying for the sins of mankind. This was something attributed to him by Paul much later. Rather, when attempts are made to kill him, he's begging God to be saved from the crucifixion. Which is not consistent with the passage of the Bible. The Bible teaches us that he was a willing sacrificial lamb happy yeah. and ready to die for the sins of mankind but if you're willing and you're part of the plan with God to die for the sins of mankind then you're not going to beg God to, to save him save yourself are you? He wasn't begging that he was uh, basically he was, he was fulfilling the prophets before him Isaiah, Jeremiah and all them so he basically that's why he came to fulfill those those uh, prophecies so he's begging be to, to his father basically that's what he died for for us to basically he was, he's the second Adam that replaced because the first Adam was the sin yeah he fell short he fell short basically he's you know he was disobedient to, to, God. to God yeah so basically he's come to replace Adam yes which we now take on once you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you are actually re rebirth into spiritual. So your, your soul is saved. So what you're saying? So, yeah. So what you're citing is two Philippians. Yeah, Philippians. Yeah. There's, there's a lot. Of Paul, Paul mentions that a lot. So he's by Paul actually said is actually it's not me that lives, but Christ. Yes. Yeah. So what what we understand again. Christ's main task was to bring the lost sheep of the house of Israel back to worshipping God correctly. Back to doing because within their re religious establishments much corruption had been spread. So for example outside the temples there was gambling, prostitution, all types of still ill have, deeds. Still have. Still have. Yeah. But the point being he came to bring them back to worshipping God correctly. Hence he says that I have only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I mean he only came for the Jews at that time. So then it aligns perfectly when he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. Meaning to say, follow my way, for I speak the truth and follow my life example. And this is what God sends prophets for that very purpose, to bring the people to observe the Messiah sent to them so that they can make the rectification by following his way, by, by um, enacting the example of his life and, and because he spoke the truth. So within that context of John 14:6. There's nothing within the, what you've stated which suggests that he's now possibly God or you know, um, something b b beyond the normal capacity of a human being. Sure, he was given special privileges, he could do certain tasks, 
But of that, those miracles, for example, that he did, he didn't do it of his own volition. He, in fact, he makes it re, 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 replendently clear that it was God doing those miracles through him. Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Yeah. Check this out. It says, And Jesus Christ, a man accredited by God, through whom God did many wonders, works and signs. So whatever works and signs and miracles Jesus did, he didn't claim attribute to it, rather it was God doing it through him. So for example, when Moses parts the sea, who's doing it? Is it God or Moses? God. 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 But he, Moses was a servant of God, of God sorry. Yes. At, at that time, it was a yeah. different era at that time. Yes. So it's a different, when Christ wasn't even born then, although yeah. Christ is still with God. Yeah. You know, because we were we would we were formed before even the earth was born. Yeah. You know, by God. So we're in all God's foreknowledge. We're, we're all short of we all short of, all So that was of, of being holy. Yeah. So that's why we need to rely on Jesus Christ who replaced Adam in the first place. So basically that's what I believe. So what what, what I say too is that what we got we got to then deduce from what your understanding from the um, writings of Paul compared to what Christ himself says explicitly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for example, Christ is very adamant in keeping the law. Mm -hmm. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, he says, I've not come to change the law, no. but I have come to fulfill it. Yeah, fulfill Don't it even well. change a yeah, tittle yeah. or a tattle. Yeah. What does, Paul, do? what does Paul, Paul say? Christ says keep the law, Paul says sod the law. Huh? Christ says keep the law, yeah. Paul says leave the law don't worry about circumcision don't worry about kosher no, foods yeah. circumcision is, is just a, an act yeah right? it's an outward uh, act before christ came so there's no need to circumcise anymore because god has accepted gentiles as well as jews as, as well as muslims it's, it's, we, we're all we all fall short of sinners we, we, we are sinners yes we are right? sinners and we indeed. need to rely on god more yeah rather than ourselves because if we all by ourselves, then we, we are falling short. Yeah. We're never going to reach that. We're no. not going to do it by works. But what we, what we understand is that if you fall short, then you ask for sincere repentance for your sins. Yeah. So you ask, like for example, the, um, the analogy of the prodigal son, yeah. where he leaves his father, and then after a period of time, he blows all the wealth that his father gives him, yeah. comes back, and his father greets him by forgiving him. He doesn't. It doesn't require a sacrifice of any capacity. Yeah, so what? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But it's, it's, uh, Christ came. He was a, a, a sacri the only sacrificial lamb that we should rely on now. The Old Testament is gone. The New Covenant is coming, which is him. Mm. Basically, he's, he's the basic sacrificial lamb. So that he's cleansed us from his blood. So what we say to that? It's not something that he again preached. This is something that because you you, you are aware, Paul who preaches what you're mentioning, he never met Jesus. He never even yeah, saw Jesus. Yeah, I know, but he, is, he does say that he's a shepherd. He's a shepherd, he's a door and everything else. When, 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 uh, you remember the, uh, when the Egyptians, right, the firstborn were killed, yeah. killed right? Yeah. And the, the Israelites put the, the paint, the, 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 the blood, the blood, the blood right? yeah. yeah. So that's the same as Jesus, he puts the blood right on ourselves. So yeah. he, that's the, that's the prophecy from then, and it's, it's happening now. But does he does he cite that example? Does 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 Jesus ever cite the blood which was put on the doors for the Hebrew Israelites? Does he cite that that is a, a typology for him? Yeah, I don't think he does anyway. No, but that's how I see. I, I believe. I, I, I I'm just becoming a Christian for what, two two and a half years now. Okay. Uh, and it's taught a lot to me. Something like that. It's brought my own sin to surface. Yeah. Which I need help yeah. to, 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 you know, to cover my sin. So what, what we say to that is that, again, if you make a sin, or you do sin, then you sincerely re make repentance for that sin. Yes. You yes. just ask God, oh God, forgive me. Yes. And there's many examples yes. in the yes. Bible yes. where... Yeah. yeah. So there's many examples in the Bible where God does not require blood sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. That's right. yeah. Simply, you sincerely re repent to God. I gave you the example of the prodigal son in Mark's Gospel and God will forgive your sins once you make it yeah. with sincerity. So what I'm saying, it doesn't require a blood sacrifice though. It doesn't no, require for a bloke no, no. to come down to die for your sins. No, it doesn't. And Christ oh, himself... It does. he, that's what he came for. He's, he's replaced... Adam. He's, basically, you accept Christ in your, in your own self. You're, ta you're taking Adam away and putting Christ in you. 
That's, that's, that's the exchange. Yeah, so that Adam Christology that you made mention in two Philippians, it's just to show that where, 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 um, where um, Adam fell short, Christ humbles himself in two Philippians to the glory of God the Father, you see. It's not that he's claiming any title of, of himself. Adam. Yeah, so where Adam falls short yeah. and, he, and he erred, Christ comes and, as he humbles himself as an obedient servant to God. Yeah, 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 yeah. And therefore, he doesn't take or, the bait of what, how Adam fell into the trap. Okay. So hence, he is a, uh, you know, a example set forth in that regard. But again, from that two Philippians passage, he gives glory to God alone. Every knee shall bow, mm. and everyone will recognize That's that right, yeah. Jesus um, is being sent by God, but to the glory of God the Father. So every knee will bow in Jesus' name, but not to Jesus, but to the glory of God. So Jesus would be used as like a method of going through God. So you'd bow, every knee shall bow in the name of Jesus, but to the glory of God. So you will all bow to God in glory, but using Jesus as a conduit. But you're not bowing to him, you're bowing to God. But as he's the example, then you get through to him. But you take, example, you take Jesus as an example as a human being, and he did come down to earth, which is perfect. He, he got he's a perfect sacrifice, basically. He was, I mean, he did, I mean, he was persecuted, he was whipped and anything. I mean, all of that crucifixion, even though, you know, the, the thorns on his head, he took all of that our sins upon him. I feel me, you yeah. know, yeah. And, and I'm humble to that, you know, I'm thankful that he's saved from school, basically. Yeah. And that's by grace I am. Yeah. I don't have to work for, for it or nothing. Okay. You don't have to, did you say you don't have to work for it? You don't have to work for it. But does it, it say in James chapter 2 verse 14 that faith without yeah. works is in vain? Yeah, but that's different. That's work right. If you if you believe in by grace, yeah. that you died as well, then you work in your own body, right, in your own soul, for the good of God, right? And it reflects out to others. Yeah. That's what works means, right? You don't have to do good by giving but give, giving somebody money will not get you to heaven. Yeah. Uh, you go to church every Sunday, it will not get you to heaven. Nothing, none, none of them. No, that's, that's all works. But, if you but why does it then say that works, faith without works is yeah. in vain? That, yeah. does, that suggests to me that, that they are both follow each other. It's incumbent that if yeah. you have faith, then the works have to yes. testify yeah. of, the, of right. the work, yeah. of the faith. That's right, yeah. So it's that works without, without believing. If you're doing works without believing that you accept it works, you're, you're doing it in vain. Mm. That's what that means. When, you, when you're actually believing God has saved you through Jesus Christ and then you work by faith, like if you believe, right, somebody approached me like, so why are you believing in Jesus? I said, I believe because he saved my soul and that's what I believe. And then if, he, if I get shot for it, that is what, that is works. I mean, but does he go around preaching that I've died for your, I'm, I'm going to die for your sins? I'm and not dying, I'm not saying that. Jesus done that for me. Yeah, but that's, that's what this is. This is a contention, you see. We, I mean, my understanding of reading the New Testament is that his central message yeah. was to acknowledge that God is the only true God and he is the messenger of God. So we see that in John 17, 3. Check this out. John 17, 3. Jesus says the following. He says, For this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God and whom you have sent the messenger Jesus Christ. Now that sounds to me very much like yeah. someone who's just a, a, a messenger, a prophet, one who gives, God, who represents God and, and, and speaks to the people as a representative. So That's John 17, 3. John, what do you think John, about that? John 3, 16, if you know it. John, that God so, God so ever loved the world that he gave his only son. Only begotten son. Well, it's so, not, yeah. So, so it's, it's basically, that's what God has said. So, and, and, and when John baptized Jesus, he, he took John baptized Jesus and recognized him straight away that he was the son of God. And so did uh, Peter, he recognized him as the Messiah, the true Messiah of Israel and, and, and all over the world. Now he's the only sacrificial lamb that you can basically rely on. You so just a quick question, why would, uh, why would John the Baptist have to sacrifice? 
also rather have to baptize Jesus for forgiveness of sins. Surely only sin sinners are forgiven or yeah. baptized. So why would Jesus then come forth and ask to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins? He didn't, he didn't ask him. He, says he, 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 he actually, of being obedient to Christ, but that's when the Holy Spirit fulfilled his, his whole thing. And so the Holy Spirit came as well as Jesus to fulfill the, 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 the prophecies from but, Isaiah. Have you read Do you know the Old Testament? Yeah, Isaiah 53. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. So it's, it's all in Isaiah 53. But Isaiah 53. It's, it's got it in um, also in, in Psalm. Was it Psalm 22? Psalm 22 explains. I mean that's David, King David. Wrote that. How did King David know? When he was the Psalm. Psalm, his, in, uh, Psalm all 20. Those prophecies. Can't, can't, can't For what I see from Psalm 22, Psalm 33, Psalm 91, Psalm 116. That Christ has a close brush with death, but he actually escapes crucifixion. How did he escape that? So, if we read Hebrews chapter five, verse seven, it says that he begs God to to, to save him, or take his burden of cup away from him. So he's quoting the Psalm 116, in which it says God will hear his supplication and save his Messiah. I've got it here. I can show it but to you. He, so. he has saved him because he, he's actually now on the, on the right hand of God. No, but in so, the, so, so why, why, why would he say that? Yeah. Now, why would you, why would somebody go out their way to die for somebody else? I don't understand that because that's the only bit I I I, I'm, I'm, I, I accept. I accept that because I. But it doesn't appear. Old Testament but, and the New Testament. but so if that is if he goes out of his way, there's two issues. At, well, a number of issues, but there's two to highlight. If, if he goes out of his way and he's a part of the plan, because he would have been aware as well that he's a part of the plan to be crucified for the sins of mankind. And according to Christian belief, he's a willing sacrificial lamb, happy to do so. But it appears that his every action is to the contrary. So when he begs God in Hebrews 5, 7, take this burden of cup away from me, or like yeah. or same thing in Matthew 26, 39, it's, it's, where, he, yeah, where he begs God. Yeah, yeah. And then it makes no sense that if that is what he actually came for, just imagine this, you've come for a particular purpose to show to the whole world that you've come to die for the sins of mankind. So number one, I would be rather doubtful if, I, if I'm observing that first of all, the gentleman concerned is crying to be, uh, and supplicating to God to be saved. And then more so, his final statement is, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? Now just imagine, those are his very last words on, 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 so uh, on the earth. Upon him. So, of the earth. No, but what he's saying is, why have you forsaken me? He's saying to me, all my pleadings, you seem to have you know, left me in, in the lurch. Mm -hmm. But despite the fact that, as I said, in Psalm 116 and in Psalm 91, it, it shows that God will save him. Do you, do you, shall we, do you want to have a quick look for the verses? I know, I know the yeah. Bible. Yeah. So Psalm, I, yeah. so in Psalm 91, verses 10 to 16 and Psalm 116. It shows that he will have a close brush with death, but he supplicates to God and God will save him. No, I don't think that's true because it's, it's so actually, it? no, yeah, yeah, but I, I, what, 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 what a translation is it? It's, it's, it's all widespread, all the tra NIV, KJV, ESV, um, NRSV, RSV, it literally, the storyline is all the same. So let me show you something, see what, what, I'm, what I'm on about. Okay, I'll go from there. <laughs> yeah. This is a good conversation. I'm glad, I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I mean, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I was so confused when I first became a Christian. Yeah. It just threw me out. Let's just do a little bit of a little research here. It's not too difficult. While Jesus was on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from so death, his that? death. That's Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. Right, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. So if you bring up to Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, and I'll, and I'll quickly go to um, Psalm 116. I've got a whole Bible in here, so... Yeah. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5. Fine, whatever you've got up there. Uh, 
Yes, he feared death. He was he actually basically had human um, instincts, he had human but he still obeyed God. So he obeyed his father, although he had those instincts. But, but he, he still went he he did he he, 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 did, he didn't go by his instincts. He obeyed his father, which was the best way, way forward. If he hadn't died on the cross, all Christianity would be void. Mm. But, but what I'm saying, my friend, is from that verse, mm. what we're saying, he's begging God with pleading, say, take this burden of cup away from me. Yeah. And because, all his, yeah. Yeah. all his, so but what it says of more, which I'm, what I'm trying to get, this is Psalm 116, which is quoting this. Yeah. So it shows here, I love the Lord for the, for he heard my voice. Right. I've heard my cry for mercy, mm -hmm. which is quoting this. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. Yeah. The cords of death entangled me, yeah. meaning the plot to get me entangled yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. The anguish of the grave came over me. Mm. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Check this out. Then I call on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. So what he's saying, quoting That's, that, yeah, God save me. David. Yeah, no, this is in reference to Christ. This is a typology you're taking for Christ. Okay, so it's so King David, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah. but yeah. this is making reference to Christ. This is the passage yeah, quoted. Yeah, but it's prophecy, isn't it? So yes. he still fulfilled it. But what I'm saying to you, this fulfilled, this, what I'm trying to show to you, from that passage mm. into this, he's begging God to be saved. God hears his supplication. He's crying out tears of sorrow. Mm. And over here, he's explaining his tears of sorrow. And over it further goes on to say, Return to you, rest my soul, for the Lord has been good to me. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death. Delivered me? Yeah, saved from he death. Saved, he saved yeah. him, yeah. Yeah, from so death. He's so, actually risen again, isn't he? But he doesn't say that on there. What the event is uh, narrating there from Hebrews 5 7, he's begging God to take this burden away from him. Jesus is then crying these supplications, begging God. God hears his supplication and he did this is where he gives thanks to God for God hears him and saves him from death. Look, it says it clearly. Look, it says it clearly. Yeah, because yeah, he's I'm, risen again. He's, no, he's, but he's, he's died, he's, but he still died, doesn't he? Yeah, he's still, he's, he died. Yeah. The miracle is, is when yeah. he died, risen again after the third day, yeah. which he had proof, he showed it to the apostles and he, the last apostle that he was revealed to was Paul, mm. which was the last apostle, mm. right? So that's why Paul was imprisoned and everything else. He, yeah. wrote, he wrote everything in detail. Yes. You know? Yeah. So just carry on with what is over here. So he says that, I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and see, so basically he said, I will make the, 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 you know, the request to God, save me from this crucifixion. You know, attempt, help me, help me with the difficulty that I'm going through. Mm -hmm. So he then says, um, I will f fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. He wrote, sorry. I will fulfill my vows yeah. to the Lord yeah. in the presence of the people. That's right. Precious yeah. in the sight of the Lord yeah. is the death of his faithful servants. Yep. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. Yep. I, ser I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. Yeah. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on them. Then it comes up. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord, the Prince of his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord of Jerusalem, praise God. So what we're seeing here from this, according to Christian scholars, they're saying, what you just read from Hebrews 5, 7, Jesus is begging God to save him from the crucifixion. This is why he's pleading in that garden of Gethsemane. Oh Lord, take this burden of cup away from me. Please, Lord, help me. And the psalm here quotes this to show how he is being going to be saved. Now I'm going to quickly show you one more quick psalm, and then we can just wrap up here. I, th I think it's, it's taken away all the sins of the people. It's just that's what it comes to me. You know, it, 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 Jesus died for our sins so that we may live. See here eternally. in verse, this is Psalm 91. Look, the, so it's Psalm 91, verse 9. The Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling. No harm will overtake you. Okay, no disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you 
to guard you in all your ways. Right. So what he's saying there is that now you're feeling the pump because you're going to be led away for crucifixion or attempt to harm. But don't worry, I will get send the angels to strengthen you and you watch how I save you. So watch this. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all, all your ways. They will lift up you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will re tread on the lion and the cobra, meaning you will tread on those who try to harm you. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. So God rescues him from the attempt to crucify him. Because, but, but then God has a, if, if he dies, no, but, oh no, but then God has a, if, if that is the case, then God hasn't rescued him because the supplication is being made for him to be saved from the crucifixion. So he begs God. So who's died on the cross then? So this is the issue we've got at stake now. Now, in Mark's Gospel, we are told that Jesus is being led away for, uh, sorry, that Simon carries the cross for Jesus. Yeah. It's not Jesus carrying the cross. It's yeah, Simon to, he, to he Golgotha. The day, yeah, so the then the, the personal him pronouns are shown that it was him, who, meaning Simon. It was him who took the cross. It was him. So these personal pronouns are used all the way up until Golgotha. Mm, then, you, that. yeah, that's in Mark's Gospel. Yeah, yeah, that's in Mark's Gospel. But in John's Gospel... He, he, he's actually taken... Why would, the, why would all of the Roman army put Simon there in place of uh, Jesus, who's the one that was being being um, crucified. Yeah, because they, been, he has been, he has been like convicted, isn't he? Of what? Well, that's what I mean. Well, he hasn't, been, he hasn't done anything wrong yeah, to be convicted. That's what the Roman, Roman, um, well, and the Jews and themselves. Yeah. that's what they've done him for. So why would the whole people see that? But no one does. No, but they must do. That's the whole point. It does say in the Bible that all his disciples well, forsook the, the, and fled yeah, from him. Before he went, before. Before he was crucified, he still had the, uh, the thorns, the thing man, he said, what do you call it, yeah, the thorns. Yeah. He had the, he had the whips. He had all, the, all his marks on him. Yeah. So, why would Simon have all those on him? But I mean, he must have been whipped as well to do that. Yeah, because it doesn't. Because in the Mark's Gospel, and we, I can show you the verses as well, is Simon who's carrying the cross. Now, often when yeah, Christ but that was, was after the third one, wasn't it? No, yes, when, he's, it was. when he's when he's walking away in Mark's gospel, when he's he, he carries the cross, Jesus has now by yeah. now escaped yeah. from the scene. Yeah, if you look at all the other gospels, mm -hmm. so all the other gospels represent, you know, apart from John, yeah. the Gospel of John, which is different, different. very different. very different. Yes, but you know that's but the all theology. The three, all the three gospels, now they were written at different times, different eras, weren't they? And there are slight changes, but it's still, you know. Like you know what I would say huge changes. Like, for example, not in not Mark. Three. Shall, shall I show it to you? I'll prove it to you. Well, in, in, I can't, I can't <laughs> I've, read, I've read the Gospels. Okay, in Mark's, in Mark's account. They all represent yeah. all three. No, all thanks. Three. I'm fine. Do no, so I have a coffee, my friend? No, no. We've been going on for a bit. Okay, so basically speaking, um, in Mark's account, we see that. Simon is carrying the cross all the way to Golgotha. No, but in, no, trust me, it's no, there. But no, in John's account, it's in Matthew, it's in Mark chapter 15. I can bring you the verses as well yeah, to show yeah, you. You're looking at one gospel. The you first one, Mark. Yeah, but they say the same thing. And I'll prove it. Give me a chance to prove it to you. In John's gospel, who's carrying the cross all the way to Golgotha? I'll give you one guess. Well, Jesus. No, no, yeah. But in Mark's account, no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's... That's a slightly different era, so you're going to have a slight change at different times. But we need to know who's carrying the cross, don't we? We can't have a change. Just, yeah. for example, if Mark's Gospel is saying that, gee, that, that it was carried by, uh, by Simon, yet John's Gospel is saying, no, Jesus carried it all the way. In Mark's Gospel, it says all the f disciples forsook and fled from yeah, Christ. It's going to be a it was description. No, what it is. It's a statement. All right. If you can. No, what it actually was actually. Tells you a story, mm. If somebody tells you a story, right, and you pass it to the other person, and uh, 10 people down the line, yeah. where's the story going to end? It's like Chinese whispers, isn't it? But what I'm saying to you, that's the issue we've got at stake. What, just, just try to observe what I'm trying to. I'm yeah. trying to come to a big point. Yeah. The big point is that John, he covers up. The, the information in Mark, where the early Christians, they didn't believe Jesus was crucified. So what he then does, I'll show it to you, I'll give you some examples for you to even consider. 
So where that doubt remained in John's time, about 100 AD, 70 years after Christ, he's observing right. In Mark's account, the first account, Jesus, the cross is being carried all the way by Simon. But I've got to rectify that and make, make it now appear as if Jesus is carrying the cross as to leave no one in doubt that he was him who was crucified. Let me carry on, it's a few other points. In, Mark, in, Mark's, in Mark's Gospel, what we, what we observe very um, interestingly is that at the time of the crucifixion, when all the disciples had forced to conflict, there was no one there to witness the crucifixion. You had from, a, you had from it says in Mark's Gospel, from far away, far, far away, and it was pitch black because the crowd, because the, the, it, it had become dark out of the act, evil act that was going to occur, that Mary and Mary Magdalene were far, they couldn't even see what was going on. But let me finish. But then here comes, so they were far, they couldn't even see what's going on. But in John's Gospel, lo and behold, is right next, is right on the cross, right next to they, they, those three, are right on the cross observing it. In Mark's account, Jesus doesn't want to, he takes this, he says, for this, uh, take this burden away from me. But what does John say in John's account? He says, is it for this uh, reason that I've come? That is for this very reason that I have come. Whereas in Mark's account, he's saying, I, I don't want to go through with this. But, but, but then John, in John's account, he's saying, it's for this very reason that I have come. So what we're observing, what, what you're observing, is that where there are in dis discrepancies within Mark's account, John comes to the rescue by leaving no one in doubt as to what, Jesus went through to leave you in no doubt. So number one, in Mark's account, Simon is carrying the cross. Mm -hmm. But John doesn't does not look at that, so he gets Jesus to carry the cross. In Mark's account, um, Jesus doesn't want to take this burden away from him. But in John's account, he says, no, it's for this very reason that I have come. That, but, and then, and then, and then in, the, in terms of the, uh, of the witnesses, in, in, in Mark's account, what do we observe? Mary and, uh, and um, uh, Mary Magdalene, they're looking from far away. It's pitch, they can't see nothing. Whereas in John's account, lo and behold, what does he have? He has all of them right next to them on the, on the cross. So there's a cross and they're right next to his feet. Mm. So he covers all that up, which later became Christian theology, that Jesus dies for the sins of mankind. It's like to ratify what he wants you to believe and hence coming into this new formula of a man being crucified for the sins of mankind. Whereas if you read the earlier accounts of Mark, who's the first gospel, so in Mark's account, it's a very different account. We're seeing... Matthew the, was, was first no, so let me explain this to you now. Although you do have it... Because it's Matthew who's a, who's, a, who's a Jew. Yeah, let me explain that to you. So you've got, although you're correctly stated in your Bibles, you will have it as Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Yeah. However, According to all Christ according to the vast majority of Christian consensus, Mark is the first gospel. Even though you have it as Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, yeah. and what they say is that Ma that, Math that Matthew and Luke, they had they use Mark's gospel as an account, and they also use a source called the Queller source. It's a German hypothetical Q sayings document of Jesus. Yeah, scholars say that scholars. This is where the Christianity gets mixed up with scholars. So but if you look at if I truly believe the Bible is true, yep. which I do, and I truly believe that Jesus died for me, then that is, is submitting to God himself. And I'm, I'm like, that's enough for me. And I'm I'm truly believing that my change in me, which I used to I used to drink all sorts. Yeah. I, I, I know where I, I was I was a heathen, <laughs> right? But, coming to God, I was, my, my worship was more round to wanderers, would you believe? Was it? Yeah, okay. you know, at the time. Yeah. Right? That was, so I, that's all stopped. I don't go anymore. Because I believe that's my idol. Yeah. You know? God, you know, and yeah. Jesus. Jesus. But what we say, Jesus Christ. yeah, through Jesus. So, what, and that's the interesting word that you've used, through Jesus, yeah. because Jesus is the conduit. He's the gate. He, he, he's the gate, but he's yeah. not the destination. It's not a destination. The destination is, yes, precisely. Yeah. Yeah. So what we say to you in regards to that, yeah. I wouldn't have any problems with you making the referral that he is um, the gateway, but he's yeah. not the path. So the gateway literally means one who gives you the example of how to reach God through the examples that he sets. Yeah. So they, well, I would, as a Muslim, that, I would accept that totally. I would be very happy to accept that. Yeah. Yeah. But what we then want you Christians really to understand is that Christ himself 
spoke of worshipping God alone. I've given you a reference yes, there. Right, yeah. So he that's never right. said. I agree with that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, excellent. You agree with that. Yes. So, so now you agree with that. What we then say further to that is that God is the only one worthy of worship, and Christ Himself is one who represents God, but He doesn't carry any divine connotations. But like He's not. Divinity. His divinity is holy and he is perfect. Right? See, when we say perfect, we mean one who does God's will, who doesn't commit any transgressions. In our belief, we believe that God is uh, uh, that prophets don't commit any major sins, they don't commit sins out of um, intent, you know. So that is that re that absolves them from any type of sin. Uh, so we don't believe, for example, that David. Um, you know, takes a fancy to um, one of his general's uh, birds and uh, wives and decides to knock off, knock off the general's, uh, uh, knock off the general in the battlefield. And why he, we don't accept that. We don't accept that um, that um, Esau. Esau. No, so we don't accept that Jacob. He um, puts hair on his forearm and deceives his um, brother out of his rightful inheritance. We don't, oh, Esau, yeah. yeah, we don't believe that um, um, Noah. Noah, we don't believe in it. We don't believe Noah got, you know, had one too many, and and, and um, had you know committed lewd acts with his um, daughters. We don't believe any of that. So what we say, the prophets were all sinless. They don't commit any sins at all, mm -hmm. including Christ. He wouldn't have committed any sins as well out of intent. So again, we refute the point. We refute any notion that. David committed any sins either, because they you know. For example, just imagine he was human. He was human, correct? Yeah. I mean, uh, they were all human. They, they were all human. All, all, I mean, when, when Adam surprised, yep. every man sinned apart from Enoch. Well, no, they also even everyone. And he was taken. He was taken out alive, and he, he was actually he still alive. No. So, for example, I think there's a reference to, if I'm not mistaken, um, a prophet in the Old Testament whose name escapes my mind momentarily. But apparently, this is, this is a bit strange, and you would have to agree as well, that some youngsters take the Mickey out of him being bald. Who's that? There's a prophet in the Old Testament now, which his name escapes my mind momentarily. They call him Baldy in the old mm -hmm. yeah in the Old Testament. Some youngsters call him. Baldy, and he gets really annoyed, and he begs God to um, punish them. And the next thing, a pack of uh, bears come out of the woods and maul the kids to death. Baldy, what's the name? Sorry, just give me two seconds. I'll bring the name of the name. I think it's the name escapes my. Excuse me for one moment. Let me bring it up. I don't know that one. <laughs> yeah, oh. I mean, it's bizarre type of stories like that we totally reject. Yeah, but I, mean, I, I, I read the Bible daily, you know, of God's Word. But well, trust me, you're, this is going to amaze you. This is going to amaze you. Like a prophet in the Old Testament of God, because he's bald, some youngsters, they take the mickey out of him yeah. whilst he's walking through the forest. He looks back, he curses them. God then responds to that curse by sending a pack of bears out of the woods and mauls those kids to death. There you are. Sorry, let me bring it out. Elisha. Oh, Elisha. Yeah. Oh, so the right. prophet Elisha says, so "Escape oh, my right. mind." Okay. So, I didn't know that yeah. One. So there you have it. He curses the Jews for making fun of his boldness. So, all right. What's the what's the verse? Yeah, let me bring it out. Yeah, oh, Kings, Kings two oh, Kings twenty. Oh, now remember, yeah, because I've remembered a lot of the verses, but you can't remember absolutely everything all the way through. So but here you have it. So what we're saying, the, we don't believe all this type of like nonsensical stuff that pop prophets who are great representatives of God, you know, some kids are going to walk, go by and call him Baldy, and next thing he's going to do, hey God, come out of the sky, and you know what I mean, oh, um, can you just please, you know, do him for calling me Baldy. And next thing you know, God <laughs> listens to his supplications and a couple of bears, three, the three, Three bad no, no. bears come out of the yeah. come out of the thing and then they maul those. Does that make any sense to you? I'll have to, I'll have to read. That <laughs> you have to have a read of that one, won't you? So, yeah. So what we say, my friend, is that all the, so we so our in in the Quran, which I'll give you a free copy of if you would like uh, when we finish speaking, mm. it absolves it absolves all the prophets. And what we say is that we want you to worship God alone. I do worship God, but I, 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 it's only through Christ that I can do that. I mean, he, he, I have to commit my, I have to confess my sins daily. Every time I get up, I have to. The biggest 
the biggest admiration of the God's word is love. Yes. God's love and mercy and his grace, which is so good in his grace, but especially I mean, he, he continues to forgive and forgive and forgive. Yeah. He does not condemn. He, he, Jesus never came to condemn, but to save the world. Yeah. That's what he's, That's what he came for. And that's what I, I believe that's what you that believe. he did. And that is a big commitment to me. Yeah. And I, I humbly come down on my knees for that. You know? And that's, I can tell everybody about that. You know, why he saved me as a person. Yeah. Because he can see the goodness in me now, <laughs> yeah. which the badness is all gone. Good. I'm glad to see that you've made a great change in your life. Yeah. Oh, it has. My, my marriage is better. Good. My relationship with my daughter is better, and that's what changes. Excellent. The person, but, you know, you, they see the change and it affects them as well. It's like, Brilliant. Really. That's what I'm amazed about, and I praise God. <laughs> Good man. Yeah. This is what exactly. All right, brother. This is exactly who <laughs> in Matthew chapter nine. Jesus forget check this out. Last little bit of information for you then we can call it quits. In Matthew chapter 9, Jesus forgives sins. Not that he forgives it of his own behest, but rather it's an authority being given to him by God. When the Jews observe him forgiving sins, they think to themselves, Jesus must think he is God. To which he responds to their thought, because he can read their minds. Why do you think such evil things? Yeah, yeah. So just pa just pause there for a moment. Yeah, no, so no, them no. saying, them thinking that Jesus is thinking he is God, is an evil thought. Yeah, yeah. And then further on in that, read that tonight, Matthew chapter nine. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. G oh, no, so yeah, yeah. yeah. So what do you say? What do you say about that? That the Jews who observe him forgiving sins, and then they think Jesus must think he is God. To which Christ responds, why do you think such evil things? Meaning, why are you thinking the evil that I am thinking that I am God? Well, they're misjudging him. They are, they are misjudging Jesus as, as the Messiah, you know, because he is the true Messiah. Then, and they look, the Jews were looking for a Messiah that's uh, like a victory, like in, in human form, and yeah. like King David. Yes. But, <laughs> I mean, King David didn't admit to that either. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Jesus never said that. I mean, he never said he was someone. He only mentioned that uh, only through me that you can reach the Father. Mm. Right? And so he is the gateway, the shepherd, and everything else. And he replaced, he's the second Adam, mate, basically, the first yeah. Adam. Yes, yeah. You know what I mean? Because all his genealogy has come down from that, from that line. And that's what I accept. Yeah. And, I, I read, and the prophecies line up with the New Testament and you know, the Old, you know, the Old yeah. Testament. So, yeah. I can't say much more than that <laughs> because I, I'm, I'm really pleased with my joy. You know? <laughs> it's been fabulous speaking to you. Can I offer you a free copy of the Quran in English if you'd like one? No, I'm all right. You're all right, I'm no problem. Fine. Second, I, I, look at, I look at the Quran. Yeah, no I problem. Mean, like, one more quick point. This conversation we've had is being recorded on YouTube. Is it? If you don't want your face to be shown, let me know now so you'll be blurred out. Right. Oh, that's fine. Are you happy to have your face on? Yeah. Right, so what you can do is so you can get a bit of fame around the world. Oh, I don't uh, want fame. <laughs> that's no, a, no, a, no, a, jo no, a joke. It's a little joke. It's a little joke. It's a little joke. Is that a camera yeah. then? No, it's a mountain mic behind you is a camera on the tripod. Oh. So, yeah. But what I'm saying to you, if you oh, don't okay. want your face to be seen, then I can get it blurred out. But if you're happy to be seen, so what you do, you've got a mobile on you? Okay. Right, so you go under it tonight. Oh my word. I didn't know I was, I was being filmed. <laughs> Not to wait, don't worry, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I wasn't looking forward to that. <laughs> like I, said, I can play, if you don't want to, I can blur you out. It's an option that you have available. I don't really. Hey, well look. That's the name of the, that's the, name of the channel. So, uh, just, oh, that's fine. Okay. So well, I'm, that's I'm not looking for... Yeah. No, no, we're not I'm looking not for looking We're looking having a nice comment. No, we're not. That's a little joke. That's a little, <laughs> like, the baldy, like the baldy prophet Elijah. <laughs> Have a look at that passage in yeah. Two Kings yeah, about yeah. baldy oh, Elijah. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's oh, see what you think. But it's, uh, Bit of an odd an story. interesting conversation, that. <laughs> Good. Hope you enjoyed it. I did. And yeah. we, you can recap it later on that on this channel. Dawa to Seoul. Dawa. D-A-W-A-H right. to S-O-U-L. Let me put it on Facebook. Can you see it? Does it stop recording now? Um, yeah, I mean, we've finished our speaking, haven't we, essentially, so... Yeah. So it's part of it... Dawa, D... Yeah. Okay. 
Why don't you take a picture of this? Make it quicker for you. Pardon? Why don't you take a picture of that? Ah, okay, I'll do that. Yeah, it'll be easier for That's you. That's alright with you. No, of course, go ahead. No, but I mean, there's a bit of respect there, isn't yeah, there? No, you, know, you, you know, you you know, you always respect what you believe in. Yeah, no, of course, me. indeed, indeed, mm. indeed, so. So it's a good conversation, so. I thought it was constructive to be honest. Very really good, I'm glad to. It lifted that. my soul actually. Oh, fantastic, I'm so glad that that's the case. Let me just get it. Oh, oh no, I it missed it. So that's it's right. Darwin, because yeah. it's reflecting. Yeah. Ah. Is that better? Ah, oh, that's better. Excellent. Lovely. Fabulous. Right. You take care. Delighted to speak to you. You take care. All right, you take care. Probably lo be loaded up roughly 48 hours' time. If you subscribe to the channel, You'll get noted you can notify yourself when it goes live so it will come on and you, we can enjoy our pleasant conversation oh okay <laughs> all right nice one <laughs>